Yo, what is going on guys and welcome back to a brand new episode of my Moto GP career mode here today and we are back for a brand new episode once again here today and if you guys missed the last episode at the last race at Mazzano then go watch it guys it was our debut on the factory Yamaha so go watch the episode guys by clicking the link in the top right hand corner of your screen before we jump into any major spoilers but we're now going to hop into the career mode game mode as always as uh, the last couple of races have been pretty good for us we won our last race on the Petronas Yamaha and we won our debut race on the M1 one, the factory M1 in Yamaha, should I say. So it's been a good start to life and a, a good recovery. You know, we had a bit of struggle, but I've worked hard to try and improve my riding style and find some more pace. And uh, currently we have 40 development points. If we can just get 10 more, we can improve on the anti-wheelie, which is something that definitely needs improving on this M1. But uh, other than that, it's looking pretty damn good. The upgrades on the bike have worked well. The bike does feel good, but uh, we need to get this upgrade onto the bike and then I'll be a lot more confident moving forward into the closing stages of the season. But today we are here at Aragon. So we're going to get racing once again here this weekend. We're going to jump into practice and see how we get on and hopefully set a lap time quick enough to jump into Q2 and at the same time hit all of our practice program targets. So let's jump into it and let's get the weekend underway. Currently on our first lap, I'm not quite sure where this lap stacks up. I haven't done any practice before. This, this is actually my first lap since we uh, last raced at Mazzano last time. So we're going to see where this lap is. I think we're not going to hit the time threshold. I think we're going to fall just short. It's going to be really close, I think, but I don't think we're going to hit it up to the line okay we do just get it by two tenths so there we go that's a good start one more lap to go let's see if we can try and get a bit of a quicker lap in this time we're on a slightly better lap here we're up by less than a tenth so we're not out of the woods just yet but we are still looking good i'm going to try and push the brakes a little bit more into the final corner this time take a bit more of a different line quite shallow on the entry back end getting a bit loose over the bump, over the last corner, using the curb to keep them really down. And there we go up to the line, and that's a better lap, 49.4. So there we go. Then in the end, we found about eight tenths, almost seven tenths in that final sector alone, which was a much more aggressive and breaking much later for the final corner. But we do improve to a 49.4. We were quickest, but we've just been pushed down a second place. We're now going to move on to the quick lap simulation, strap on a set of double soft tires, and we're going to see what kind of pace we have here. We need to improve by at least a second. So let's see if we can try and find that kind of rhythm and uh, get below 148 at least. 1.3 up, this is looking pretty good for us. Just got to try and have a strong sector four once again and try and push the braking as much as we can here in sixth gear here. Quite an ag aggressive entry in the brakes. A little bit hot, but that's okay. We'll get a better exit as a consequence. Short shift to fourth. Over the hill, we're going to get the Buena Quattro and there we go, job done. We achieved the goal and the lap time. And there we go, then everybody's running double hard tyre, so... Uh, that lap times aren't really representative, to be honest with you. Having said that, our lap is pretty good. If you look all the way down to P12, 3.3 seconds, I think we should be okay with that one. And uh, we actually beat the threshold of a 48.4 by 1.1 seconds in the end. So the sector four, once again, was very good. Even though we ran out a bit hot on the brakes, the exit was really, really good. So I feel confident. I think we've got a good pace. We can run into qualifying, hopefully, and make it three poles in a row. So let's jump into the session. Let's see how we get on here for the qualifying session at the Aragon Grand Prix. Okay, so straight into Q2, that's exactly what we want to see, and that is very positive because the last couple of sessions we haven't been first, so it goes to show that the lap in practice was really, really good, and I can definitely match that again, I think. So let's jump into qualifying, and let's see if that pace is true. Ooh, run that in a little bit hot there, we're going to miss the corner by quite a bit, we're going to continue on anyway, see if the lap's good enough. I don't feel like we've lost a ton of time through there, even though it wasn't the cleanest run. Let's see if we're still up. Yes, we are by a fraction. And we know there's more time to find by correcting that mistake on the next lap. Let's just finish this one and see where we go. Hopefully we get it inside of 148. That's nicely done there on the brakes. That's right on the money. Short shift. Perfect. Use the curb a little bit, and there we go, job done over the hill. 47.6, even with that mistake. Good pace from us. Bike's working well, I feel confident around here.
There we go, that's right on the money. That's more like it. If I can finish this lap, this would be a, a much better lap from us. Rins actually takes pole with a 47.2, so we do need to improve the AI stepping up their pace. So they're showing me a little bit of pace that I didn't think they had. Three turns up though currently on Alex Rins' time, let alone our previous best, so this is good. On course to match the lap time we did in practice, depending on this final sector. Valentino Rossi now currently P1. And now Mark is 47-2. Okay, the AI stepping up here. At the final corner, power down. Over the hill. What do we get across the line? 46-6. And there's the benchmark right there. What a lap that was. That was right on the money. Not one mistake in that lap. That was flawless. I think we'll struggle to beat that, to be honest with you. Uh, damn, we were up by a tenth. I've made a hash of that. That's going to cost me the 10th. Right, we're going to box in and uh, try and strap on some fresh tyres and try and improve on that because that was a good sector too, really good sector too. Uh, I think there could be a bit more lap time in there, maybe a 0.5. So uh, we'll go for fresh rubber and try again. Oh, no, 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 damn it. I was half a second up on my lap. That was so, so good. Damn it. I think we're going to end it there because uh, damage to the bike surely does some damage after that crash. But also, I want to keep my tyres. And there we have it. Then the results are in. And we do secure pole position. And that is now three in a row for us as we secure pole for the Aragon GP. Ahead of Andrea Dovizioso and Marc Marquez in P3. Daniel Petrucci P4. Ahead of Valentino Rossi P5. And then Rins in sixth. And then on the third row, we've got Crutchlow, Miller and Vinales. So, your usual suspects, they're really in the top nine. But crucially... The championship contenders, Davia Marquez, there on the front row with us. So it's going to be an interesting one. Either way, that is ever qualifying. We're now going to move into the race. Here we are then. It's race time for the Aragon GP. I'm going to start the race on double medium tyres. Again, that has worked for us in the last two races in which we've picked up the win. So I'm going to stick to the formula. It means we are going to have to put up with some late race tyre wear. But if we can try and establish our lead early on, then we should have a good race on our hands. And of course, the setup will remain the same. I'm just going to double check to make sure everything is in order. Because sometimes the setup tends to reset itself. But in this case, it seems to have stayed the same. So there we go. Things are looking good. And I feel confident. So we're going to jump into things here. Hopefully we can make it three out of three and that would really put us back into the driving seat in terms of the World Riders Championship. And I think we could potentially overtake somebody today depending on results elsewhere. But other than that, let's jump into the race and let's see how we get on here at Aragon. Here we go then. We're going to try and get another good start as the five red lights are on. Lights out and away we go here at Aragon. Getting away reasonably well. Marcus on the inside. We've got to leave some room. Looks like nobody else is going to get by. We're going to try and have a look on the inside there, but no way through. I tried to get straight back past Mark Marquez, but he just blocked us off. Nice run, though, up the hill. We're going to see if we can maybe get a move on the inside of the Spaniard. Marquez a little bit wide there. He just comes across. I was going to go on the inside, but he just cut me up a little bit there. I had to get right out of the gas to avoid contact. Just got to see what these tyres are like as well. Double medium tyres, front and rear. So far, so good. We've uh, established an early. We are pulling away from the bikes behind as we go into the chicane. hate these two corners. I'm not a fan of these one bit. I always find them so awkward and they're so sluggish on a GP machine, on a premier class machine. But so far, so good. We're keeping Marquez there. He's not running away with it. You know, Marquez sometimes likes to just run away out front, but we're keeping him in our sights, which is exactly what we want. A little bit early on the brakes now. I missed my breaking point. But that's okay. We didn't lose that much time. Just Stephen Marquez there, you know, so we know where he is. Eight laps ahead of us. There's a long time for us to make a move on Mark. So we'll just be patient with it. Oof. That curb almost hurt us there. Got to be careful. Definitely a lot less grip on these. Marquez at the minute is really going for this. He's trying to open up a healthy lead. And it's going well for him. I'm a little bit scruffy as well myself. I'm not really keeping it that clean in certain corners. But again, hopefully we'll find our rhythm and we'll start to bring Marquez back in. At the minute, Mark has got the pace on me. Half a second quicker than me on that lap. I can't really respond to that at the moment. It is where it is. But we're doing a good job of keeping second place under control and uh, keeping Rins at bay. But obviously the race is long. I still think we can attack Marquez. A bit wide there again. That's going to cost me some time. 
I was pushing the limits a bit too much. I was on a good lap. I mean, I still am, but we was really making a lot of progress towards Marquez on this lap. We just threw a little bit of time away there, but we're still visually a lot closer this lap. Gap down to a second when it was 1.5 this time last lap, so we are closing him down. The gap behind, though, is absolutely massive. It really is a two-way scrap, and Marquez is trying to stretch this as much as he can. Let's see if we can keep it nice and tidy through here. I want to see what this lap is as we cross the line. Power down. Not the best final corner. A little bit too wide. Up to the line though. 47-2. Fast up the Grand Prix. So we do respond to Marquez, which is good. And there's plenty more of where that came from. So let's keep it turning over. Let's keep it ticking. Oh, that's a better final corner. Much better. We're now getting close to Marquez. Getting back within range. Rear end squirming about on the braking, but that's okay. Nice bit of sexy drifting on the braking to make it look good. Skids for the kids, as they say. So it's time to really put the pressure on Mark now. I think I can have a go at him here. The AI are not very good for this section. Turn 4 5. They're quite poor. Marcus will probably be a little bit wide here and get an average exit. That's going to put me right on the back of him. Not quite close enough just now, but. We are there or thereabouts now. We're knocking on the door. Nicely done on the braking there. Staying nice and close to Marquez. He gets a fantastic bit of acceleration in fairness to him. Out of there. I'm going a bit hot here. I've got to be careful. I'm starting to run a bit wide through there every single lap. So that's going to cost me eventually. I need to use that curb. Normally I wouldn't do. But I need the curb to stop the bike from hitting that, that wheelie. So... That's something we'll upgrade at the end of this episode for the next race. Oh, that's perfect. That's right on the money. That's right where we want it. Through the final corner. Over the hill. We're getting close now. This is going to get feisty. Three laps to go. Fantastic late on the brakes of the turn one. Nice bit of information there. Knowing that I'm late on the brakes for there, but I don't think we're going to need that. I think we're going to try and pass him before turn one next lap. Nice exit through there. We're flat out over the crest. Down the inside of Marquez. What a move that is. Marquez goes straight back underneath. He saw me coming a mile away. And he makes the re-overtake, unfortunately, for us. That was a fantastic overtake from me there. Cut that corner a little bit, but that's okay. We'll get away with that. Trying to ease the throttle on. Out of there. Not quite though, we still get that wheelie and we lose a lot of time. Rear tyre starting to go away as well, so we've got to be careful with that. But you can see how much we've lost on the straight just by getting that little bit of a wheelie. This is why we need the anti-wheelie upgrade. I've gone in absolutely sideways there, which is not ideal. Rear tyre starting to let go. That's a shame, we made the move, but it hasn't really counted for nothing. Two laps to go. I think that was my move. I'm starting to run out of tyres and the rubber's starting to go, I'm losing grip. And I'm losing pace very quickly. Marquez is pulling it away. With a lap and a half to go, I suddenly don't think we're going to win this race now. It's going to be a battle of survival to hang on to P2. Last lap, we're up to the 149s. That was not a good lap for us. This is going to be all about survival and just hanging on to second place, I think. Unless we pull out a miraculous final lap from somewhere, which I can't see where that's going to happen at the minute. Oh dear, that's a bit wide. That's not what we want on the last lap. That's going to put me under some pressure. Tires are really gone. I've got no confidence on the braking or grip, really. Just got to try and get through this chicane unscathed. There we go. Easy on the throttle. No need to wheelie. And there we go. I think we should be okay now to hold the second place. I think in hindsight, a hard rear tire may have done the trick. But we would have struggled a bit more at the start. But Marquez is going to respond. He's going to end my little two-race win streak by picking up a win of his own and thus extending his championship lead. The good thing is we are going to claw some points on Dobby, but P2 for us in Valencia will take that. Three podiums in a row for us.
And looking at the final race results then, Marcos, as you can see, just confirmation of winning the race and we pick up the fastest up of the Grand Prix. A shame really we had that one overtake and we didn't make it count, which was ultimately annoying. But Rins in third, Valentino Rossi P4, Dovi fifth, and then we've got Miller, Vinales, Petrucci and Crutchlow running out the top nine here today. In terms of the Riders' Championship, we do close the gap to Dovi and we're just one point behind him now, but we're still 30 points behind Marquez, who has now got a clear daylight between himself and the rest of the pack in this championship, which is... A little bit disappointing for us, but you know, it is what it is. We'll try and claw that gap back over the next couple of races. And in terms of the team championship, we're currently in second place, equal on points with Ducati. So we've managed to claw that back and get that back on target, which is good to see. Pramac currently P3 ahead of Repsol Honda, which is quite surprising. And in terms of the constructors, we are currently in third place. Honda only five points behind Ducati, and we are 31 points off the top. So again, that championship is getting closer and closer every single race. But guys, that is going to be it here today for the Aragon GP. If you guys enjoyed it, drop a like on the video and subscribe if you are new for daily Formula 1 and MotoGP content. And also check out these two videos on your screen if you have missed them. But other than that, guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you on my next one very soon. But until then, it's goodbye from me.